These are a set of fully trimmed front seat covers for the Jaguar E-Type Series 1 4.2 litre versions. So that's applicable to the open two-seater Roadster, the two-seater fixed head and the four-seater 2 Plus 2 models. These have been done in what we refer to as new tan and they've been made to original specifications so that's leather faced meaning the majority of the seat is leather i.e the pleated panels for the cushions and the backrests. This surround here is also leather but the backs here are moquette as are the cushion retainers and the surrounds here are vinyl. Bear in mind on some very early versions of the 4.2s this surround here was uh, sometimes done in leather which we can do these ones here have been done in vinyl as i've just mentioned so the customer has sent us his original frames and we have manufactured new seat covers and used new seat hardware and retrimmed them for him so just to go over the basic principles of it all we'll start with the cushions so the cushion bases the bit bum goes on they are handed this cutaway here is for the inside edge where the gearbox comes through the tunnel as it were. So this here, as we're looking at it, is the left-hand seat. This one is the right-hand seat. The backrests are not handed. Uh, the cushions, the principle of trimming them, fairly straightforward, although it's not necessarily an easy job, but the concept's fairly straightforward. The difficult part is this section here. It gets pleated obviously front to back as original here and then you get this seam sewn across which goes down into a recess in the foam and that becomes your anchor point basically uh, so you do that first then everything moves away and the crucial thing is to try and make these areas here as smooth and crinkle free as possible which is sometimes easier said than done uh, you'll also probably find that uh, you'll do one seat and it'll go one way absolutely great and then you'll try and do the other seat and it just won't work the same it's uh trimming is an organic process so just bear that in mind patience is the main skill required um you can see as well just before we go any further we've used a smooth texture finish lever on this seat at the request of the customer dependent on the color we can offer smooth or grained finished levers so just see our website for more details on that the cushion has a moulded foam underneath it, which gives it its main definition. You then also get a rubber diaphragm. There's the foam there, you can see rubber diaphragm underneath there. And also on the front edge here, a wooden tacking strip corner, as it were, so just tack it round there, all of which we can supply. You can see the moquette retainer along the back edge here, which means that when everything is said and done, moquette backrest and a moquette retainer all match one another so that was the principle of the series 1 4.2s before they started switching to vinyl slash leather cloth for the remainder of the cars so like i say the cushion's fairly straightforward it's just those bits there um one thing to keep in mind as well is you always want to be making sure that your pleats match up nicely between the backrest and the cushions so as you can see you can see just the lines going into one another there. So as you kind of work on these things, never go too far without constantly kind of checking that because it's uh, quite hard to do once the seats are fully trimmed. What we recommend doing is actually trimming the backrest first and then the cushions after because it's easier to adjust the cushions than it is the backrest. Moving on to the backrest. They consist of obviously the cover. Then you have underneath the cover, um, the padding is what we refer to as rubberized horsehair. It's a fiber hair, basically, uh, as per original spec, which is put in place on the frame. You then have um, webbings, which are effectively diaphragms. So they're, they're rubber rings. Uh, they use hooks to join up the rubber rings, and then they're attached to the frame. We can supply the replacement rubber rings, but we do not supply the hooks. You reuse your old ones or find a substitute like a hog ring or something like that. Normally, you can reuse your old ones very uncommon that you can't. Um, on the very lower edge here, there's also a rubber lumbar strap, which again, we can supply, which come with the hooks included. Uh, and then on the very, very bottom of it, if I just tilt this forward, you have a tacking strip that goes along here. So we can supply that, it gets bolted to the frame, and then you uh, tack the backrest back round and under so the pleated panel first as you can see and then the backrest back comes over the top and tacks over it 
we all obviously have the advantage of having staple guns here, so we use staple guns, but traditionally they would have used uh, tack and hammer, which obviously you can do yourself at home unless you have an electric staple gun which, or an airfield one, which is even better. Uh, so that's how it's trimmed around there. The principle of it is quite straightforward. I'd say the main areas you need to focus on is this curve shape here of the piping, making sure that maintains consistency around the frame. And then the hard part is locating the holes here for these bits and bobs to locate into. So you just take your time with it. And like I say, you really need to be making sure that your pleats between your cushions and your backrests match up as you go along because it's a lot harder to adjust after the fact. See our handbook for more help and tips on how to trim these seats, or if you prefer, just let us do it.